lots of garlic, lots of butter, and well, lots of cheese. My name's Philip, and I'm gonna show you how to cook an awesome little garlicky cheese bread, which is super simple, which makes it perfect for home-cooked pizza nights. Let's get cooking. So in we go with 300 grams of room temperature water. Now the total handling time for this dough is really quick. So you can prepare it the night before in about five minutes or so, and then just leave it sitting in the fridge. The next evening you can stretch it out in the tray, and then in about one to two hours, it will be ready to bake. To the water, I'm adding 10 grams of sea salt, followed by a quick stir to dissolve. Now this garlicky cheese bread is a great addition to a home cooked pizza and in the coming weeks on this channel I'll be showing you some great home cooked pizza recipes too. Now I'm adding 8 grams of instant dried yeast. Now I don't need to activate this yeast but if that's a process you normally follow then please do. I'll leave some notes in the video description about that. Right follow up with 15 grams of good quality olive oil. And next, I'm adding 400 grams of strong white flour. This one's a Canadian flour, high in protein, it's around 13%. But this dough is gonna be contained within a tray, so building a strong gluten network isn't so important. So feel free to experiment with different flours as they will all produce different tastes and textures. We need to give this a mix to let all of the ingredients get to know each other. The aim here isn't to work this into a smooth dough, but just to make sure that the flour has come into contact with the water. Now remember, all flour isn't created equal, which means the amount of water that it will absorb may well vary between brand to brand and can also change depending on humidity or the seasons. So if you feel that the dough is a bit too sticky or maybe a little bit dry, then make some notes and tweak the water content next time. After a minute or two, you can feel the dough has come together and this is the kind of texture that you're aiming for. Now the mixture needs to be covered with a plastic bag and left out at room temperature for 30 minutes. This dough is gonna be left for a long fermentation and it's not a really wet dough, so I wanna avoid any dry spots during that long proof. So I'm gonna turn this dough over for about a minute or so to make sure it's well mixed. Now some of you might notice that I didn't do that with a focaccia on last week's video and that's because it was a wetter dough and so it wasn't so prone to any dry spots. Rub a little olive oil around the bowl and pop your dough back in. Now this needs to be covered well to stop it drying out and then popped in the fridge for an overnight proof. This will sit quite happily in your fridge up to 48 hours or possibly longer. Rub some olive oil into your tray but avoid creating a swimming pool. You do not need that much olive oil. This tray is 32 by 42 centimeters which is 12.5 by 16.5 inches and this recipe makes 700 grams of dough which fits perfectly in this tray. Now this is the biggest tray I could find to put in my oven, so you may find that you need to reduce the quantity of dough depending on the size of tray that you've got. I'll link to this specific tray in the description. Drizzle a touch of olive oil around the edge of your dough and using a scraper gently release the dough from the bowl and then turn it out onto the tray gently. Now light hands are the secret here. The lighter the touch, the easier the dough will stretch out in the tray. Now avoid pulling on the edges as you'll end up with an uneven dough. Instead, slide your fingers under the dough, trying to move it from the center first. You can use your hands to push the dough out, but again, try to do it gently, working from the center and evening out the thickness and not forgetting the sides. If the dough starts to tighten up, just cover it with a plastic bag and leave it to sit for 10 minutes on the countertop covered. Come back to it and gently finish the shaping. You can repeat this step a couple of times if it's easier. Remember, light fingers are definitely your best friend here. Cover the dough and leave it to proof at room temperature. Mine took about an hour and my kitchen was 18 degrees Celsius. That's 65 degrees Fahrenheit, but keep your eye on it and adjust the time as necessary. You'll know when the dough is ready as it will feel springy to the touch and full of gas. 
So now it's time for the garlic butter. Now for this size tray, I've gently melted 100 grams of unsalted butter in a pan. I've then finely grated four big cloves of garlic and added this to the butter. I let this sit to infuse on the stove top on the lowest heat, that's heat number one, for about five minutes. Now the key to this is to get the texture of the mix right. If it's too runny, then the brush won't pick those bits of garlic up with the butter. And if your mix is a little bit too runny, you can pop it in the fridge for a few minutes just to stiffen up slightly. But this is the texture that you're looking for. Once that's had a really generous coating of garlic butter, it's gonna get 300 grams of grated mozzarella. This needs to be the firm mozzarella, not the soft cheese with the whey liquid. The trick is to make sure your cheese stacks up around the edges of the pan and then finish off sprinkling in the center. Give the garlicky cheese bread a good seasoning with sea salt, dried oregano, and freshly ground black pepper. This is gonna bake in the center of a preheated oven at 220 degrees Celsius, that's 430 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes. Now my oven's set to bake mode, which means the fan is turned off and it's got top and bottom heat. And for the best results, bake this directly on top of a preheated baking steel or stone. And if you don't have one, you might just need to extend that bake time a little. Keep an eye on it while it's baking and once the cheese is turning golden and the crust is dark brown. Bring the bread out of the oven, remove from the tray straight away and leave to cool on a wire rack just so it can set up for a couple of minutes. And yeah, good luck with that weight. Oh, the base is lovely and moist, which to be perfectly honest, is a very good thing because this is just oozing with garlicky butter and cheese. But the real prize are like the crispy edges around the outside. You know what, you just need to give this a go and tell me what you think. That's it for today, guys. You know what, keep me up to date with what you're doing in the kitchen. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.